Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight. Here we are again, the morning team of Alex and Lori. <laughs> Part two or three. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. How, how many years did we do it in San Francisco? About 11 years, right? Total? Yeah, exactly. Total. And, yeah. and there was, you know, a little bit of a hiatus. And then you came back, much to my delight. Yeah. And, uh, and the guy that they hired, it just wasn't a fit for him. He was a nice guy, but he was a shock jock. Yeah. And uh, it just was, it was not you. you know? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So I came back and, you know, we gave respectability back to the radio station. I remember the day I came back, the first rating book that came out, I figured that ah, will go up a little bit, right? We went right yeah. back to where our numbers were I, yeah. whenever. And yeah, people delighted. were like, hey, have you heard? But they didn't stay that way. You know, things go up and down. Ratings go up you know, and down. Live 105 does not exist anymore. It's I know. It's, yeah. And there is going to be a Live 105 reunion of like our heyday. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a three-day event planned by our promotions people. Do you remember the Melrose Report? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, those two women. So that's going to be fun in September. I'm going to go. I'm going to definitely go. Really? I didn't. Uh, but, nobody's let me know about it. Oh, well, I'm letting you know. Oh. And, you know, this cost, crossed my eye uh, because you've been to how many Burning Man? Multiple, haven't you? I, I, went to, I went to the, I think, the second Burning Man when they went to the desert. The Burning Man yeah. started in San Francisco out by the mm -hmm. Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> And they would do it every year. And then they moved it up to uh, the desert in Nevada. And the second year that it was there, I and my friend Paul went up there and and saw it. And it were like 5,000 people there. Yeah, Maybe. and now it's 8,000. No, it? it's more like 100,000 show up. Is it? I mean, it's incredible. Because now. it is, gr gr is Grenlock the name of the town in Nevada? Gurlock, Gurlock. Gurlock. And so there's a big Burning Man who finds himself in a really unusual battle with a company called, I think it's Ormat, Ormat. And they are the biggest geothermal company, energy company in the United States. And they want to build a plant there. And Burning Man, even though Burning Man has a very noble theme, which is to leave no trace, you know, they clean up right. after, after it's over. They, they literally people go into this desert. Uh, they uh, throw their garbage around. They poop there and everything else. But when they leave, they try to clean up their area. And then they have this cleanup team that goes in for about a week and just mm -hmm. literally scrubs that desert like you never know there was anything that happened there. Exactly. You know, before they clean it up, it kind of looks after Burning Man. It looks like San Francisco. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, just like old times. But uh, that they do leave a huge carbon footprint because you have the RVs coming in and people travel in style for that these days, don't they? Oh, well, I mean, you know, you the last time we went, you see, what, what happened was I went with my friend Paul and we decided we keep going there till somebody got killed. Yeah. Has yeah. that happened? Well, that happened the third time we went up there. And we oh. and, and there was there was some there were a couple of people that got killed. They were one of them were out in the middle of the desert, had, had pitched their tent, and and somebody because you could get you know you could get on that desert, you could start at one end at night, turn off your headlights, and just go straight, and it huh? would take you about 40, 50 minutes before you had to turn the lights on. That's pretty true. Right, because it's just it's the largest I think single landmass of its sort in the country. It says there's nothing out there. Uh-huh. All right? And so some people pitched their tent and somebody ran over them. That was one death. And I can't remember. There were a couple of others, and I can't remember what they were by, but Paul and I just said, well, this is the last we're going to do it. And then mm -hmm. the next year, Paul died. Yeah, so that was So we never life. went. But what we did is he rented a huge 
van, you know, camper. Mm -hmm. What do you call those things? RVs. RVs, but this wasn't an RV. This was like a land ship, you know. Oh, a five, fifth wheel or something. Oh, it's just gigantic, okay? And we rented like four or five of them, okay? (laughs) You had a compound. Because he was taking everybody from the company up there. You know, uh-huh. and then we had this little little enclave that we built, you know, and uh, we uh, we hung out there. You know, I remember. Yeah, I was. And Play was a really innovative company, weren't they? But they were stymied by several things. His Play, death. And, Play Incorporated was the name yeah. of the company, and they produced the first what we could call TV station in a box, and all the stuff you would need to do a full blown TV show was in that yeah. box and it was not expensive it was like about i think it was five thousand dollars or something yeah you know? was it called the video toaster it was called, no the video toaster came before it this oh. was trinity it was called okay. uh, it wasn't named after any religious experience trinity it was named after the first atomic explosion mm-hmm. in the united states which was the trinity project and um uh, so we all went up there. I mean, I remember I was there with uh, Dana Carvey's uh, brother, Brad we Carvey. Brad, yeah. Who Dana based that character of Garth, I think, on on, <laughs> on Dana on uh, Brad, and and we just all went up there and um, enjoyed it and did what it did. But then somebody died, and we said we're not going back. You know, mm-hmm. and yeah. the next year. Paul, at 41 years of age, had a heart attack and died. That's That'll you know. throw a company into mayhem. And he was my best friend at the time. So I know. I, that was the first yeah. best friend I ever lost. Thing is, I keep losing best friends. I know. And the, the fact wonder- is that if you live long enough, all your best friends will die. If I know. you that's, outlive them. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, if you outlive them, yeah. you can be lonelier and lonelier. It, but, uh, it is. I mean, I was I was counting on Shecky to give the uh, speech at my memorial, uh, you know, but yeah. uh, it was not to be, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, now I don't have a best friend left in the whole world. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, lost, uh, you, I lost a guy named Steve and then another one named Bruce David and then, uh, then Shecky. It was, you know, and I told Shecky all the time, I said, I lost these two other best friends. You better not go, damn it. That's right. You know? <laughs> and he did not heed your warning, your beseechment. <laughs> uh, he just wouldn't, he never listened to me. Yeah. He was a good guy. I knew, got to know him. That's how I met David. You know, you facilitated our Letterman experiences. And uh, I got to meet him when they were on a strike. So he was kind of roaming the halls. Letterman was, yeah. and I was in his office, and he came in, and I remember we talked about Indiana because I have relatives there, yeah. Yeah. and he grew up there. Yeah. That was the extent. So we had a Hoosier chat, yeah. but that was it. Yeah, but they find themselves, uh, Burning Man does, in a battle with this Ormat, and because Ormat essentially has a history of going into places like there's a big aquifer apparently under Gerlach, and they can access that for their geothermal plant but then it also like the ground sand wait, 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 where are they they're building a geothermal plant in girl they want to they well they want to they want to people you got to know uh, the girlock isn't in the middle of nowhere but you can see it from there yeah you know <laughs> no binoculars necessary yeah but i think that nevada has like 15 plants like that and so it's a ripe territory for geothermal energy companies and uh so it's, you know, it's pre, I mean, it's presented. It's one of those things that presents dilemmas from sides that you would think fighting climate change would be in unison, but not necessarily. But these are the times that. So what is, what is the problem with that and Burning Man? Is Burning Man being threatened? Burning Man's opposing that. Oh, they're uh, opposing and, it. Yeah. And so uh, normally they would kind of be on the, they both have the same goal of climate change, you know, fighting climate change. Right. And so it's made them odd. Put them enemies. In odd. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Not downright enemies, opposite. Uh, Gerlach is this town that is, it's the town before you get to the desert. It's the closest right. one. So if you want to go to lunch, first you got to drive through the desert, which will take you 30 minutes. And then you yeah. get on the highway and you go down and they spend another 15, 20 minutes driving and you're in Gerlach. 
And there's mm -hmm. and at, at least at that time there was only one restaurant there. Yeah. Do they have food trucks that go to Burning Man? Because that no. would see like no. I don't remember no? any food trucks. No, you had to bring your own food. Oh yeah. See, that would be that would take some uh, doing. They may, to... they may have been food trucks, but we didn't look for them because we had our own food. But your own and, stash. and every day for lunch, we'd get in the car and go to Gerlach. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Well, it, it brings lots of do re mi into the town of Burlington. Oh, that town, if they ever stopped doing Burning Man, that town would dry up. We just yeah. dry up. Yeah. So this is an unusual conundrum. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, I like events like this that make you look deeper into a situation, that makes you get out of your trough mm -hmm. and think about other implications. Yeah. But the uh, the Nevada, or there are 15 already in Nevada, and the ones that have been halted have been halted because of the toad, a particular species of toad that would have been eliminated if they built it there. So that got squashed. Well, screw the toads. Screw the toads. Now, there's also. I mean, did you ever care that much about a toad anyway? I can't unless it was a pet and he had a community and I didn't want to see him off, you know. I I could see that, but I do not have a pet, so. Um, turtles here I've kind of adopted because every once in a while they'll start looking for shade and you're looking ones down at your feet. So oh, that's, that's kind of nice. That's adorable. Yeah, that's it's very adorable. Everglades-y. But, uh, Evergla <laughs> you come up with words that had never been invented before. Everglades-y. I know. See, that's I mean, I'm I, sure. I, I'm sure. If I went to a person who was a language expert, they would say that Everglades-y could be a word. It should be because it conveys what you're talking about. It's Everglades-y. Like, yeah, reflecting, <laughs> and so that works. And uh, boy, this and, is like but, old. This is like old times. I've always always enjoyed just conversing with you. you oh know? yeah, we had fun. I mean, every topic we could bring in and get some amplification. And when we took calls, we did not screen them uh, until and, and later. And the same relationship is kind of going here. I mean, when you said Everglades-y, I went into my riff about what what is that <laughs> Everglades-y? <laughs> yeah, well, and swamp-like. It's the marshes. It's well, the marshes that are the Well, swamp-like makes sense, you know? I mean, yeah. like my butt is swamp-like. <laughs> You, have, you can we sign up for like you know an ongoing photo, a slideshow of the Everglades and your butt yeah. and how they <laughs> over the years they go together. Uh, but that's you know that's in in Florida, and then there's the Okefenokee swamp. Oh, of course, too. I know the Okefenokee. Yeah, yeah. In fact, and there was, was a cartoon. Remember Pogo? There was a cartoon called Pogo. Yeah, it was very popular. It was considered very uh, cerebral and whatever, but it was all about these critters who lived in the Okefenokee swamp. Yeah, and yeah. there are critters, and when you get up close and personal, like I thought about joining one of those wildlife protection things, like restoring the reefs. You know, mm -hmm. it's fun. You get out with some fun people, and you pile up rocks. It's like childhood. So um, I thought about that one, but they they do good work. I have been to weddings where people instead of taking gifts mm -hmm. they will you know you can sign your checks over to any number of coastal reclamation uh outfits yeah. so but, that's kind of nice but you know and, what you know what you, i was thinking about just now excuse me but uh one of the animals that everybody loves are the polar bears right yeah and how wonderful and, the polar bears are do you know what the most dangerous bear in the world is I would say it's our icy comrade, the Ursa. polar bear. Yeah, uh, that's right. Get and here. if you go somewhere, if you go somewhere where there are polar bears, and you're going to go for like a hike or whatever, you know what they hand you? A, a shotgun. <laughs> Forget the clubs. You might because they say seal. if you get anywhere near a polar bear, they're going to come and try and decimate you, and you got to go with go at it with the with the with the shotgun. Yeah, well, bear kill, kill more than deer every year. More people are killed by bears or by deer than bear. By deer? Yeah, deer because deer. Well, well, maybe they Iowa, hit. Maybe maybe they hit your car and you go off it. the road. Is that it? That's really? It. That's it. That is it. You. Yeah, that is it. 
And so they were a huge problem in Des Moines, especially, I think they're what do they call that crepuscular, where they tend to be active at night and at dawn. And yeah. so going to work was always like, whoa, what are we going to see? Bambi's buds. And yeah, Bambi's it, offspring. It, nocturnal, I think, was the word you were looking for. Yeah. But you yeah. would probably make up your own word. You're very good at that. I, I think, yes, I am. And uh, as it should be, everybody should be able to make up their own. Now, what's the difference own? between yeah. Everglades-y, which I think was the word you used, yes. and Evergladian? Probably yours is more accepted <laughs> or easy to find in the dictionary. Can you believe I think we're sitting here sorting out the English language? I know, yeah. but I, because I used to travel, remember those eight pound dictionaries uh, that you had to have a stand for? Like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got one of those. A friend got me the stand and the whole shooting match. And so the, I had to do something with the stand. And so I put the dictionary in my car in the passenger seat. And whenever you're this at a stoplight, no time wasted. Yeah, but you don't even need a dictionary anymore. Well, you just go. Way. You just take your iPad and go to like Word.com or whatever. Yeah, that would you know. But this was in like the '90s, and so I would have that, and I was never bored. That's what that's what it all is. It's it, it's how we alleviate boredom. And find the fun. Yeah. Fun. When no you were a kid, kids. when you were a kid, mm -hmm. did you have your parents buy an encyclopedia for you? Oh, they sure they bought the whole set and the child craft. And my dad would go through when they made updates and sent you stickers in the mail to put them at the bottom of the page. If there was an update, he would put those stickers. Do they in. even make encyclopedias anymore? I I can't imagine why they would. I mean, I would imagine but, the uh, the I would imagine the Encyclopedia Britannica if I looked it up is online. Oh yeah, I think a lot of them And you could subscribe to are, it. Yeah. But you yeah, don't need but, an encyclopedia cuz you just go to Wikipedia and you type in the word and there you are. Can you imagine if we'd had Wikipedia and Google when we were children, we would have been insufferable. You know, just walking around correcting people all the time. Well, well, you know, in some places, they're not teaching kids, I think, how to write uh, cursive anymore. Oh, no, because what do you need it for, really? Um, you know, writing a check for some people is still an archaic. I, I have not written a check in years, but the last time I did, I had to remember how to fill out each of the parts of the check. Yeah, like the X's for 100 X's. Yeah, yeah but, write the amount here. but first you have to write the uh, the uh, number, 100, let's say $100, so it would be 100, 000, 000 line XX, right? Uh-huh. And then yeah. you would write uh, 1, O-N-E, 100, yeah. H-U-N-D-R-E-D, mm -hmm. dollars. Yes. And, and then you would go the same thing, you know, 0, yeah. zero slash xx yeah it was for redundancy but i mean i balance. tried to do that one time and i can't even write well anymore i mean oh I, well my penmanship was i was pointed out by my cousin because i write letters <laughs> to my uncle is illegible so then i made i made a conscious effort to get more loopy. well my full name is bennett schwarzman as you know and yes. when i write it now it's bennett i can get that out and then s-e-h-w-a-r <laughs> i know it just ends then well probably when you first started getting asked for autographs you saw a big decline in your legibility that's why doctors you can't read them well when i did my autograph it was alex bennett it wasn't you know, Bennett Schwarzman. That's true. That's but, true. You know, yeah. if, if I'd had to sign Bennett Schwarzman on everything, I'd get writer's cramp. <laughs> that would be like they, when they used to ask me, like you go to the bank, you open a, an account or you do anything. They would ask for a password and I would give them these long, complex things that had sentimental connection to my childhood. And I had a bank executive look over their glasses at me and go, are you sure you want something that time consuming? <laughs> and it was just like, you're right. Yeah, that's it. One word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were, we were having an uh, argument the other day uh, on the show about where do you keep your money these days? Like oh, the, the, the stock market ain't the greatest idea right now. No. Yeah. And, and there are so many unregulated banks. I was listening to. And the to banks, the, the banks. I'm going to put it in a bank. You know. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, scary. Let's say I've got let's say I've got five hundred thousand dollars, not two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I want to put it in a bank that's FDIC insured up to two hundred and fifty thousand. I got to put yeah. it in two separate banks. Exactly, and you know the uh, online banking industry is not regulated as nearly as I think it should be. Um, so those are, those are kind of iffy. Not all, I'm not saying that as a blanket statement. I'm saying if you online bank, look into it. Look into their viability as a company. Yes. Because we had Silicon Valley Bank. Well, I, I went into a bank a couple of weeks ago and they asked me for identification and I said, show me yours first. You know, because <laughs> I, I, you know, I want identification out of a bank. I want to see yeah. your uh, flexibility. Uh, and all these banks have turned into horror shows. I mean, I go to Bank of America and they're doing terrible stuff to people. What I well, love best is you put you put like fifty thousand dollars, say, in your account, mm -hmm. and you tell them I will go with the high yield interest, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I've got fifty thousand in there, and they say, well, you have to keep at least two thousand of it in there. And I go, fine, no problem. And then I get my statement and I see what my interest payment was on fifty thousand dollars. It was like a dollar. Yeah, it's it's very well. The interest rates were so low, and then Powell gets on there and makes it makes whatever he does happen, and uh, it, it's caused a lot of chaos. Silicon Valley Bank, which oh, was a oh, big it, yeah, it was a, it was yeah. the bank for Silicon Valley for all the big startups and yeah, um, you know, yeah, I and, think, and there's so. There are like so many high profile things that have gone out of business. I mean, Bed Bath and Beyond, but that's new. Well, see, I think I think everybody's doing cutbacks lately and my argument was that if they wanted to uh, save Bed Bath and Beyond, they should have done away with the Beyond. Yeah, okay. and changed it, it to Beyonce. <laughs> Bed Bath and Beyonce. Beyonce. Staff <laughs> all look like Beyonce. Very Beyonce karaoke, dance. You had to earn your discount by dancing to Beyonce. Yeah, no, but but like, okay, if they just did away with Beyond, they might be able to exist, but they didn't want to cut back on the Beyond. Did you Yeah, ever... and you got confusing. People are daunted by too many options. You know, that's why at the the registries for weddings are a good idea, except people who registered at Bed Bath and not Beyonce have run into trouble because their registries, yeah. first of all, it was like not available, not available, not available. And now the data is getting shrinked. So that's that's a concern. So register at Amazon or something you think is stable yeah. at, you know, a body shop. You know you're going to need that. A plastic <laughs> <system>. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's what, and I'm up here. I'm with you today without my Botox, which I'm due. For. Wait, so I've become. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm taking a brave step out of vanity. Oh well, you're not old enough now, but. Um, oh, I uh, will be. <laughs> uh, um, uh, what is it they put in us to stop? Like if you have arthritis, I always get a shot right here of. Uh, it, there's something. Yeah, oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it stings like hell, but it 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 makes it go away for a while. I'll get that. Yeah. Well, whatever what? that substance is, my, my wife is 90% that substance now. She, <laughs> she goes in and she gets a, a, a cortisone. She gets a cortisone shot for everything. Oh, I got a, I got my butt's hurting me. I got to go get some cortisone. Boom! You know, <laughs> my eyelashes she's 90% cortisone. <laughs> but you, know. you're, you're, you have a hot wife. I mean, she's beautiful. And she wants people to have the cheekbones. She she only photographs that way. If you have to wake up in the morning next to her, it's a different story <laughs> all together. Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> well, you but wait know. a minute, so you get Botox, huh? I do in my forehead because I have a thing here that comes out. I don't care to look my age. I just don't want to look stern. And it makes me look overly serious and stern. Like the chick in uh, Billions. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Billions? The one with uh, the really dynamic English actor. Yeah, I just don't. Well, I didn't watch that show. But yeah, uh, the woman that played the in-house psychiatrist—I can't remember her name. Mm -hmm. She had a huge one. I can't imagine she didn't notice it on camera because sometimes you notice on camera things yeah, that you don't. Yeah. And uh, I think she's since had it fixed. And it's you know it's not much of a commitment. It's like every three months, and they yeah. Keep 
Um, women always, when they're watching television, notice those kind of things. Guys don't. Marjorie always notices something on a woman on TV, like, you know, oh, the left side of her face is drooping more than the right side of her face. You know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I think the anchors, the female anchors midday on CNBC wear wigs. Because you can kind of tell there's like a... Oh, really? They don't attend to the hairline well enough. Oh, That's my to, theory. Oh, well, it makes it easier. You know, because yeah. somebody can work on the wig and then you put it on, you go on. You don't have to do I'm your hair. I'm not against it. Yeah, yeah, I just think they ought to pay it's more attention It's television. It's cosmetic. Exactly. I'm not a, a newswoman. I'm a... Be, I'm, I'm a... Uh, a I'm a journalist. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a journalist. I'm a beauty. Anna. Yeah, God, that's it, man. Anymore. Hey, it was I a can't Reddit question. You, I can't tell you how much I enjoy this. You know? Oh, Ben, it's a blast. It, it's I look like, forward like to it no every... time has passed between you and I and our, our relationship to each other. And I just wonderful. And I, to bring uh, the fact that we got to wake up with so many people every day and maybe make their day a little lighter because of our goofy yeah. um or just wait a minute our show made it like made them lighter i uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> i just thought it was you know i always used to picture somebody driving in from hayward you know we we did in the bay area hmm. and just just getting a chuckle yeah, that's or, the idea that's why we did it that yeah, or that uh, and let me not say it uh, to lead you all wrong we did it for the money too <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and there were some days it was so fun. You did you can't. It was I can't believe it. Paid. I can't believe we're working. You know, and it wasn't. It wasn't work. Yeah, it was the yeah, best. I, I I said that when ten o'clock came, we're running over here. But the hell with it. Well, I said that when uh, uh, ten o'clock came, the best part of my day was over with. I know, and so I and that timing still feels like I get kind of. I also. Fish. Yeah, I also added the term, how pathetic is that? But, you know, <laughs> anyway, can we talk again? I just, oh, I just have so missed this, you know. I would, I'm, same here, same here. I would love it. And uh, like I say, and the fact that we get to talk to our friends. <laughs> stick, stick around after we're through here. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. Love you. Lori Thompson, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, okay. Let me turn on the lights here. There we go. All right. Turn on the lights, Bennett. You stupid idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Don't turn off the lights. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex, and uh, this is um, Thursday. And, uh, um, 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 you know, it's time for us to go check... Uh, uh, our uh, citizen panel, which, you know, Thursdays, I'm thinking of not doing a show on Thursdays <laughs> because uh, while I do appreciate the people that are here, uh, it still is something that, uh, you know, kind of dismays me a bit. I mean, also the number of people who have been calling the show have not been very good lately, so, you know, whatever. Uh, let me see here. Let me bring on the Zoom panel. There they are. There's Jeff and there's uh, Alan. Hello, Jeff and Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. I don't I'm know doing how, better. I, 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 All I, over the news in the past couple minutes. What do you the mean? Senate, the Senate passed the uh, debt ceiling bill. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so Biden will probably sign it tonight, and that will be one less headache. One less headache, but do you think? Well, we'll get we'll get into this in a second. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. um, but um, there will be no Jack Bishop show tonight. There'll be no intersection. Oh, uh, because he had to go to a hospital. Uh, okay, something to Hope do he's with okay. uh, something to do with the prostate. You know. Oh, yeah, I do know that problem. <laughs> well, you know, uh, be, be, if you're lucky, the day will come when, like Phil, you have to get rid of your prostate, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, no more prostate infections. You know, that, that's the one thing. I, I People say, Alex, do you believe in God? And I go, not really. Because if there were a God, he wouldn't have invented the prostate. I know shit. Or at least designed it the way he designed it, which is like a little walnut-shaped uh, sized um, uh, organ. That it chokes the, off the, your the, urethra. The urethra goes right through <clears throat> it, okay? Yeah. And as you get older, your prostate enlarges and starts to clamp down on your urethra. 
Now, if he had just put it up here instead of through here, right, right. everything would have been fine. So is there a God? Well, if there is, he's not a very good engineer. No. Um, I, I've got somebody trying to get on here, but I don't believe him. So uh, I've had a couple people trying to get on in there, you know. Hey, would you bro, right? Does that sound like a, does that sound like a legitimate name? Hey, would no. you bro? Anyway, so uh, Jack has a problem tonight. So if we want to run this thing short tonight, I will. I don't know. I you know, I'm here if you want me. If you come and join us, and not that Jeff and Alan aren't uh, good uh, guests to have, but there'll be more. But it's getting insulting. You know, there'll be more. It's getting Thursdays insulting. Thursdays are always bad for you. Yeah, but like last night, we only had like six people. You know, and that was you, a good interview with Lori, by the way. Oh, but well, Lori's terrific. Lori's terrific. Uh, I'm going to do more with her. I, I got. I haven't got any in the can right now, so I got to. I got to call her and write her and see if she wants to do some more. Uh, uh, here comes Brian Neary. I, yeah. I hope it's Brian Neary. Let me keep my finger on the button here, as long as these people are trying to make life miserable for me. Uh, uh, let's see here. Is it Brian? Is it Brian? Is it Brian? Is it Brian? Uh, yes, it is Brian. He's in his car. Oh, and here comes Phil Meyer. Okay, but uh, oh, uh, Phil, uh, really? Yeah, Brian, you can hang up now if you want to. <laughs> I'm going through a tunnel. Sorry, I'm, I may get disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the view, but I'm driving the wife's Tesla to Lodi right now. I thought you almost said your wife's testicle. Yeah. <laughs> But that's it. Uh, I'm going to work a night shift tonight. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I gotta want to connect with the night shift guys. Haven't seen them for a while, so. Let me let me ask you something about the Tesla. Do you ever kind of get scared that you're going to run out of electricity? Uh so, uh, so my car, my normal driver is in the. Uh, it's in the shop overnight. Yeah. And I had to go to this tonight. So it was sort of unexpected for the car to go in the shop. So I, so I text Tiffany and I said, you know, can I use your car tonight? So I don't have to drive the McLaren up to Lodi because my Cadillac's in the shop. So she said, well, I only have 30%. So she came home on the way home. She stopped at a supercharger and charged it up to about 80%. Yeah. And then now i leave there she says is this enough i said that's fine just get me the car home and then i'll figure it out because it goes about 179 miles on that and then i can look on lodi it's about 100 miles each way so i know after i get up there we have some units at work so i can actually charge while i'm working tonight okay so now let me ask you a question you say she she charged it at a fast charger and got it up to 80 percent. how long did that yeah. take about 30 minutes really wow. okay that's not bad it's not yeah. bad. So when you go to the office and you charge it at your job, how long does it take to charge it up? I don't know. I don't know how fast these chargers are. But the superchargers, like when we go to, when we go to San Diego in a few weeks, we'll stop probably two times, and it's about forty five minutes to an hour. And but they have like Tesla has nice like the big ones on I five. Mm -hmm. They have like a nice cafe and they have bathrooms and nice couch seating and everything. Mm -hmm. So, and then they have, they usually have these at places where there's, you know, McDonald's and, and all those kind of places. Yeah. So, so we usually stop at that one. Wait a minute. You, 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 you're breaking up a little bit there. You're breaking up on us. So we'll stop there, charge it. We'll go grab it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably just where I'm driving. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, hello. Yeah, it's probably just where I'm driving. Hello to Phil. How are you, Phil? Hey, I'm uh, just still working on setting up the new computer. Yeah. No. And, uh, oh, so we're going to put up with, for the whole show with you clicking on stuff to see why it's no, working or no, not working? No, I, uh, I realized that I didn't have any pictures imported into the Zoom on this computer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. uh, I've got to blur the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got another hub coming. So I just got one hub, a Thunderbolt 3 dock and uh but i need more usb ports 
Well, what you just said was very boring to most of the audience. Yeah, they don't yeah. have a four hub. Uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I bought an uh, I bought this Thunderbolt three dock. I I don't. I don't know. Uh, most of the things that I have plugged into it are USB. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why why you you know. But you can't plug these. Uh, the Thunderbolts can be used also as USB Cs, I believe, yeah. as well. Yeah, so. I'm using that too. Yeah, because uh, the studio doesn't have a lot of ports. Mine does. Well, it, mine has the same amount of ports as yours, but I need more. Well, then you just add uh, USB ports to them. Well, that's what I did. Yeah, I put it in USB. I mean, I got a couple of, I got two monitors plugged into mine. You know, I'm fine. Good Same to go. thing. Nobody knows what you're. Oh, look at about. that! Look at that shot out uh, out of Brian's window. My yeah. God. This I'll is going path. through Livermore. This is a uh, 84 going through Livermore. They widened it up oh. to two lanes each way. Yeah. If oh. Benita's on the call, she'll know that. Uh, so this used to be a single lane going, but they're they're widening everything out here. Wow! You know, so, as, yeah, we. As Jim Browning used to say, he's not in the middle of nowhere, but you could see it from there. No, that was my line. Oh, I thought yeah, it was. Alex just said that the last half hour ago. And I don't know who I stole it from. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, but no, I because I wish uh, I wish we had uh, Charlie here because tonight I saw on TikTok. A picture of a freeway in Houston, Texas, that's supposedly the widest freeway probably in the world. It looked like it had, what, eight, nine lanes on each side? Do you know of that? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I've seen the over ramp, like the, you know, going from one big freeway to another. Mm -hmm. They have in Texas and they have these over, you know, the ramps going over and over another one. Mm Looks pretty crazy. Yeah. In Texas. Yeah. 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 But that's that's Texas. Uh and uh you know. So anyway, how y'all doing? You good at doing well? Your lives mm-hmm. treating you okay? Um the uh the uh the uh, our Senate uh, just passed the you know, the the bill, uh, the uh that ceiling that's, bill. That's that's ceiling I don't, bill. I don't care. I got my social security payment a week ago, so if it would have, you know, stopped it, it, it would have been fine with me. Well, I, you know. A, a typical Republican doesn't give a shit about anybody else but himself. That's right. Yeah, yeah but I mean, they, they just <laughs> they just tippy-toe always up to the chasm, and they look over, and then they eventually do it. I, Mar- 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 Marjorie's going, oh, are they going to do it? Are they going to? I said, they always do it, you know? They always get there at the last minute because neither party wants to be considered responsible for us suddenly going, you know, off a cliff financially in this country, and I don't know exactly what it would do. You know, North Korea would uh, loan us money anymore because they would say we're not uh, right. Uh, right, we wouldn't be able to get that good money from North Korea. Yeah, actually, if you don't want to take North Korea's money, all the government has to do is call me up and I'll give them some gabnet bucks. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, but well, I mean, you've been laying around. Yeah, but I mean, it. it it's just I, I just. This whole, you know, to begin with, I'll tell you what I saw that was wrong. They took away $1.4 billion from the IRS. Oh, that was not wrong. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, no, you don't like the IRS because you don't like paying taxes. But taxes are Nobody what... Nobody does, especially ta- Trump. Taxes are what make things keep rolling in this country, okay? All right? Well, how about spend I less? mean, if you want... Well, then how about... Cutting the the military budget by two thirds. Start with that one right there. What do we need? This huge, huge budget. The closest country to us is England, who's only at like uh, oh I don't know a, a fifth of what we are. Well, you know that was one of the good things that Trump did is said that NATO needed to start forking over more dough rather than us being. The, yeah, but that wasn't coming out of our mil. That wasn't coming out of our military budget. Well, I'm just saying. I think budget. our. I think our military, and this time they still gave the military more. But the thing is, the reason you want the IRS to have agents is so they have the ability to go out and start auditing, especially the big corporations, which they haven't done because they don't have the manpower to do it. 
Well, it's not the big corporations. They got 87,000 agents for it's people like you. No, no, you no, it isn't. You no, it isn't. You. No, it isn't. Because what we pay in taxes is minor in what in comparison to what the corporation should be oh. paying. Wait till those guys get out there. Yeah, and start you you just don't them. like them because they you, know, you you think they're evil and they're horrible. But come on, somebody has to collect the taxes. You, Otherwise, let's just do away with them for everybody. If you can do away with them for the corporation, do away you know, with them for you. Some of the most successful countries in the world don't have taxes. Oh, well, I thank see. you for stopping by, Phil. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Have a good night. Did you have a good, <laughs> you have a good night? sixty minutes uh, last week or a couple weeks ago? The uh, guy talking about all the dispense, all the defense spending, and oh the yeah, oh the defense spending is ridiculous. I mean, yes. the kind of yeah. things that defense will pay for. Hello, Brian Sigmund. Uh, uh, anyway, um, that's kind of weird. The picture you've got there, Brian. I don't think he has a green screen. Uh, no, yeah. but then if you don't have a green screen, don't use the thing that you know that comes with Zoom because it just doesn't look good looks terrible yeah well there goes brian's picture anyway um what where was i where was i going with this uh, uh you, no. you were happy about getting audited no i wasn't happy i'm not happy about getting audited in fact i've never been audited well it's time you were you know um <laughs> but uh bend over and spread them you know it, it, the irs i mean i agree that some of the irs rules need to change in the way in which they deal with people, okay? Uh, but uh, I, I don't think that by cutting down on the amount of money the IRS gets to go out and do audits, that's all, you want to save money? That's how you do it, because you're able to collect money. You it's, know. you know, they, they're collecting enough. What, do, what do you mean? No, they're, a little less. obviously they're not collecting enough because we can't. And you got pay, a problem. You got a problem with people that are able-bodied collecting welfare, doing a little bit of work. Absolutely. Come with that one. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, yeah it's a free absolutely. lunch. Hey, no, anybody. Hey, listen. You know, we have more jobs right now. There aren't enough people to fill all the jobs that are open, right? That's true. So my feeling is is that we should pay some people not to work. Oh. All right, just like we pay farmers not to grow crops. Oh, uh, if uh, how does that sound, Brian? I don't know. I pay people not to work because there's a shortage of labor. Yeah, Explain I'm just that. I'm just saying that, like with uh, what do you call it with, uh, um, uh, or either Brian or Kevin or anybody, mm -hmm. uh, you you have farmers who are paid not to grow crops because they do crop right. rotation. Um, why don't we do people rotation? I mean, if people don't want to work, then let's pay them not to work because there are jobs that other people want to take. That's all I'm saying. Well, all in, I'm in Maryland, I have a friend of mine who he comes from a uh, family many, many generations. His last name is Whittington. Uh -huh. And down in Maryland, they what they did to his family was they didn't want to be associated with growing tobacco crops. Okay. So as a political signaling thing, they decided we're not going to grow to They paid farmers not to farm. Yeah. Um, I mean, something like that is, yeah, that's, that's a little extreme, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's all for political gesturing. It, there's nothing Fine. really gen, genuine behind that. So I, I don't know. Can't they uh, grow different things than uh, tobacco? So for instance, they can plant, I don't know corn or whatever other things they grow. Well, we we don't need corn. We got no really. We got enough out of corn now. We we have enough corn in this country. I mean, uh, well, tobacco was more profitable, so you would have to pay them not to grow it. That's the point. Yeah, but uh, what happens is if they grow the same thing over and over, the soil ends up uh, uh, getting depleted. Uh, I think they have to rotate the crops in order to keep the soil. Yeah, and that's but that's true but i mean any good farmer would know to do that so he doesn't screw himself over it's not something that has to be regulated farmers rotate the crops because it's a smart thing to do yeah but anyway i mean um uh, all i'm oh, saying i know all i'm saying why is, wouldn't they grow what if, uh, kevin what do you think about this whole debt thing this that they just passed uh 
honestly, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it except the fact that I wouldn't get a check. <laughs> um, I, I saw some of it. I didn't see the whole thing. Um, but, you know, some of it I agree with. But I don't know. I'd have to look at what they're cutting um, to really have an opinion on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know. I don't, it, I don't disagree with any kind of cuts. But... Um, it depends on where they're going. Yeah, but the, but no, but some of the cuts. I mean, um, there were some cuts in the education area and so on. There was a lot of stuff they cut that, you know, is is stuff that's people's stuff. You know, how about the COVID funds that never got used. Well, how about the COVID funds you collected? That you know, well, they got used. How do they get <laughs> used? Yeah, no, yeah, but the, exactly. The government, the government has a budget for COVID funds that they've never dispersed. Mm -hmm. And so that can be redirected. Uh, no, I don't think anybody has an argument with that. Although the question is, and I wish Charlie were here to answer this question, is COVID over with? Of course not. Not in your household. Huh? Well, not in your household. Not in my household, but is it over with? No. You no, can't I, prove it by me. You I know. don't think it'll ever be over with. I think, like we said before, it's going to be like the flu every year. Yeah. Yeah. Another disease just, on the list. Just another, just another variant of flu. That's how we're reacting to it in the detection business. Okay, so. but you're you're in the detection business, right? Yeah. Uh, are, is everybody sitting around on their haunches kind of waiting for the next big one to come? No. 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 No, we're, we're moving on back to where how we were before COVID. Before COVID, we had about 20 other infectious diseases that we we're testing for. And when COVID came, we stopped doing everything just for COVID to help. So now we're getting back to all of our yeah. other other assets. So, but that's not for that, us we're treating it just like just like another flu. But that that that's not my really my question. My question was now, now let's say we have COVID to uh, to a certain level of manageability. Let's say right. that, okay. What are the chances that another pandemic of another nature is going to come along? Good. Well, we we we, we were there. We were there for um, for Zika. Uh -huh. We were there for you know we've been there for all these diseases that popped up, and the government asked us to stop everything to help them. So you know we did a lot of stuff before for research use only. But and but, but so so we're so we're. We're not sitting there waiting for the next one. We know there's going to be something. We just don't know how big it's going to be. That's right. Well, I mean, but the question is, you know, if it is something else, you know, I mean, Zika, while it was dangerous and a problem and so on and so forth, never became the problem that COVID right. became. COVID was decimated. Well, but, right. But our reaction time was just as quick. We took like like 30 days to come up with a test for it. So, so that's how we are. We're waiting. We're definitely waiting for anything that happens that they need. I mean, we just did monkeypox also. Yeah. Monkeypox didn't come that big, but we're there to do, you know, to do t detection through DNA very quickly. Well, for so that's how that's how we've been for you know since I've been there over nineteen years now. For detecting monkey po for detecting monkeypox, don't you just simply throw peanuts out? We just show a picture of Phil. <laughs> oh, that'll chase monkeys away, that's for sure. Yeah, that will chase them away. I chase the disease right out of you. Well, all yeah, so all, yeah. we've always been like that. That's 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 our niche. You know, our niche is to get testing very, very quickly and very accurately. Good. <clears throat> I think a lot of it depends on the spread rate too. I mean, if there's something that's going to spread real fast, like like COVID did, that that makes a big difference too. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Trump said it's no worse than a cold. Right. Yeah. 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 And reactions like that can cost. And it would mutate to the point where it would be no worse than a cold. Yeah, he didn't say that though. Yeah, well, he was he was Mister Science. With you know, he, he like knew Trump. everything about science. Yeah, with that. Now, an expert, huh? topic number two. Um, have you heard the latest about Trump and the uh, classified documents? Oh yes. yeah. Was, it, did you watch that uh, little argument last night on TV? Little no. argument. What was the argument? I, I tell me. Oh, Abby, what's her name from CNN? Drilled. What's his name? Mister Trusty, the lawyer. Mister Trusty. Mister Trusty is that his name? That was that was his name. I. I this I isn't this isn't the guy. This isn't that. the guy that looks like a mobster, is it? 
No, it's the other guy that looks like uh, John Goodman about 20 years ago. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. He, uh, uh, she was drilling him, and he just, you know, he was. It was. It was pretty funny. Well, what happened was is that they found a, a, a tape of Trump talking to somebody and admitting he had classified documents yeah. and telling them what it was about, which was, it was about Iran. And a he was trying to defend it. Iran or something, yeah. What? Possible war with Iran. The possible war with Iran, yeah. So, yeah, come on, I mean, it. I mean, you can't defend it. He says, well, I declassified them. I'm sorry, a president can ask things to be declassified, but he can't <laughs> declassify them. Uh, and this thing, this is just another nail in the coffin for him with this situation. It's not getting any better. It's funny because <clears throat> when I saw it, it was last night, I think, and I saw it about 10 o'clock our time out here, and I saw it as his um, his lawyer, and then this today I saw another you know s little snippet, and it was listing him as his former lawyer. <laughs> Oops. So I think he well, fired. he could have been his lawyer yesterday. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I must have gotten uh, must have gotten fired or something overnight. Well, they I was either, listening. They either fire or they quit because they don't get paid. Yes, Brian. Right. With a Y. No, no. I, was, I listened to a guy named Bo the Fifth Column. He puts out little snippets throughout the day of all the headlines that come in, little four minute videos, and he was just talking about how this trial for this is going to end up being what he called a push play trial where all they're going to have to do is not really make a lot of arguments but just show everything that's been on record that's been said talked about you know and i mean he's just i to be his defense lawyer has got to be a freaking nightmare well it's a nightmare on two <laughs> levels number one you don't know if you're going to have a job tomorrow number two or get paid number two you don't know if you're going to get paid <laughs> And number three, you have an uncontrollable client. You know, I mean, if you hire a lawyer, I learned this a long time ago, I don't go into the courtroom and then tell the lawyer what to do or decide I'm gonna say what I gotta say in the courtroom that he may have told me not to say, you know. I mean, there, it, he, he, the, Trump is the worst of all possible clients you could have. Um, the only thing I like about Trump is in the last couple of days, did you hear what he said about DeSantis? No. That DeSantis didn't do anything for COVID in his state. Cuomo did a much better job in New York. He's right. And I had to say, well, He's right. this, a stopwatch is right once in, you know, every twice a day. DeSantis didn't close the state down. He didn't close the schools down. He that's right. And that's one of the reasons. And his COVID numbers were no worse than anybody else. Oh, that's yeah. funny, Bill. I like when you tell jokes. Why? Yeah, but the stakes uh, well, so with, the, well, wait a with minute. the information that we had all along the time, the stakes were higher. So I, I, I could see how you could say he gambled and he wasn't really that far off because of all the things that come to light. But at the time, it was it, he was just going along with the bullshit, you know, the, the right wing bullshit. So I mean, like he, he's. He may have stepped in shit and came up smelling like roses, but he he's still. But and, he, and he, so did Christy Nome, or what's her name, Nome. Uh, what? The, the one from North Dakota, she did the same thing. But you know, North yeah. Dakota doesn't have the population well, that Florida. Does. Florida doesn't have the population either. You don't. You think of Florida as having a huge population, and it, it's it a pretty good size. It has population. a decent sized population, but not like California or New York or even Illinois. In, well, you know, you California, know. New York, and Illinois were the ones that were the most draconian, and they had the, the highest numbers. Yeah, we had high numbers because what happened was we were the first ones to get COVID, okay? We were like the test strip here because what happened was is that COVID started, everybody's saying, oh, it's going to come in from Asia, right? Well, it didn't come from Asia. It came in here through Europe. All right, it worked its way across China the continent. People to Europe. Well, wait a minute, let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah. So it then made it to here. And what happened was they were coming in in the airports with COVID like crazy. And before we knew it, we were infected. We didn't know that was what was happening. 
but that's what was happening. That wasn't happening to that wasn't happening to Florida at that time. So we had to take very draconian steps to try and stem the tide. Yes, uh, 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 I just Al. wanted to give a, a little factoid here on Fox News. A uh, total number of COVID cases in the United States as of March 10th, 2023. California had the most, had uh, 12 million. What, when was this again? As of COVID, as of 2023, as of March 10th, mm -hmm. 2023, about a month ago. And this is since the beginning of COVID. Yes, okay. yes. So California had the most with 12 million. Florida had the second most with 9.8 million. Yeah, so it feels not. They didn't have any problems there. So it was second. They didn't Who's, have any problems. Where did New York wind up? New York is a one, two, three, four, five, six down the row, and they they had sixty seven hundred. Okay. Uh, you know, New York didn't report. They had fourteen thousand that died in the uh, old age homes, and you know they didn't say that. Uh, the, but they were they reported later on, that. Phil. They were yeah, reported after, later after on. After they kicked the guy yeah. out of office for lying. <clears throat> no, he wasn't kicked out of office for lying. That isn't, you, Phil. You're absolutely wrong. Well, Do you like know lying you, and wait, groping? Wait, 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 no, not lying. He never was thrown out of office for lying. Well, they decided not to prosecute him on the, on the false numbers. No, but, they said they weren't going to prosecute him because they didn't have any evidence that he was uh, there was any malfeasance of office. That's okay. the reason they didn't fight. They didn't. I'm telling you, Phil. I live in this state. I know That's what happens you, in this state. Yeah. Well. Well, uh, no. Don't try to tell me what goes on Tony, here. Ask, I, ask Tony's mother. You know. I, I, I don't. Oh, jeez. And. Phil. Even Tony would be upset with you invoking his mother for the sake of an argument. <laughs> no, he was. De DeSantis didn't have a crystal ball, and he's not exempt from being correct on things. It's just, you know, don't, don't, don't call me some kind of a genius if I put my kid's college phone on red and it hits. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And and by the way, my my grandmother and my my mother takes care of my grandmother. She's one hundred two, and. And she down in Florida in Sun City Center. I, I would go down. I would call her and say, "What's you know going on down there?" And in those communities, those those retirement communities, um, they thrived in despite of what the politics were in Florida because they were they had people out there wiping the handles down at the pharmacy every time someone came in. I mean, you know, they had to take care of themselves. So you know, people still stuck to their guns with stuff. And, and and try to thrive and survive the way they could you know this I, I don't I don't give DeSantis a lot of credit for for what go, what went on down there but you know I'll just say that he wasn't all wrong well no I mean, but so you have to understand you have to understand, Brian as I said before Florida was not a port of entry in this country not a major port of entry into this country New York was and yep. that's the reason why we got it and we got it before we were even expecting it and then we got it so fast that we didn't know how to handle it because there was no previous metrics for dealing with it, okay? So uh, Cuomo, uh, who was very good with this, had to invent the metrics, you know? He had to, you know, suddenly get people to put masks on. He went on every night, told people to wear masks. Uh, and when the vaccinations started happening, he started hustling people to go get the vaccinations. He, he saved my life. Yep. Yeah. He did no, I, no matter what you want to say, a guy my age, 83, he saved my goddamn life. Yes. And he helped the, he helped the entire country, too, because it wasn't until Cuomo was going out every single day where then the Trump administration had to finally do that. Yeah. You know, the, and then that, that exposed but, but a lot were, of things. They were doing the, a bad the, job of it because you had uh, a Trump giving false information like, oh, you know, you can drink bleach, can't you? That's, you know. not what that's what he did say, Phil. That's I heard it. He said, he said they know, used bleach to kill the virus. He said inject bleach. He says they use bleach to kill the virus. Why so can't, can't you come up with that? But you don't use bleach to kill the virus. Phil, yeah, he, he, Phil he, he said we're looking into that, right? That's wrong. No one no, was yes. looking into that because it was all yeah. stupid. Also, the chlor hydrochloroquine yeah. thing, that was a total fake deal. And okay. The fluorescent, the fluorescent tube up your ass. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. If we if we run ultraviolet light. light in your body, 
They used the blue light to kill germs. Uh, all he was doing was asking questions. He was thinking out loud. Well, he Isn't shouldn't have thought out loud, loud during a national crisis where people were dying. That's irresponsible, that's the way Phil. He operates. That's then, well, then that's Phil. irresponsible. Phil, you don't think out loud like that. Of course I do. Like why? Do you, why do you? Why? Why? Oh, you making believe me, Phil for, does. Well, why are you making excuses for being a complete dumbass? That's what I don't understand with the whole Trump thing. It's like well, people make excuses for him. Like Phil, I, you're like you're nothing like Trump. You just. Maybe oh, I don't know about that. You got to know well, no, him a bit no, better, no. Brian. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I had I, I, people, the no. smartest people I know, I well respected, are into Trump, and they're nothing like him. They're nothing well, like him. Personality-wise, Brian. Personality-wise, I agree with you. Well, I don't. Uh, other Brian with an I, I Brian. So I may lose you guys because, believe it or not, my, my phone's dying, and I can't charge it with this this uh, look here. So. Okay, so the one thing that pissed me off about Trump was when he had his speech a couple of weeks ago, he <laughs> said that the Ukraine, he said that if he was president, he would have that war stopped right away. It's terrible. Yeah. People are dying. If I was president, I would stop it tomorrow. But people are dying and it's horrific. So if it's so fucking horrific, why doesn't he still go and stop it now? If he has this magic plan he that he can stop it right away, why wouldn't he do that? I don't. He's I, because he's, he's a citizen. Well, wait, 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 Phil, he's Phil, Phil, Phil right I got now. news for you. There are a lot of presidents who've been citizens who have been, in, in, you know, who've done stuff. Yeah, they, uh, you know that that was one of the one of the problems that uh, a number of uh, administrators that were coming into Trump's uh, thing. Uh, they, they, I don't believe that no, they. No, 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 no. Phil, they he's using it like a threat. No, no, no. He's using it like a threat. It's a campaign. Like saying, thing. Oh, if I, if you make me president, then I can stop this because it's horrific. But since I'm not, I'm not going to help you guys and stop this war. I'm not going to help stop all of the people dying in Britain. You're too you young, Brian, to remember Nixon and uh, the Paris Peace Accords, where he said he had a secret. He had a secret, and he was going to stop the Vietnam War. It was a uh, a prom a campaign promise. There was no secret, uh, you know. I didn't Trump vote saying Wilson. Trump saying uh, a campaign thing like that is just what. Yeah, but Phil, Phil, I don't I I don't you I don't take that as an excuse. You know, well, I mean, when you say things like that, you're saying, "Hey, I have the secret for solving the uh, Ukraine problem." Well, then let us know. Well, tell yeah, us, tell us, so we can do Nixon something did. about it. Why we have to reelect you in there order to find no out secret. what that is? Yes. But what I'm saying is, it's just as illegitimate as what Nixon did. That's exactly yeah. what I just said. So, but so am I supposed to? Am, am I? What is happening to you? Brian? Is uh... Brian's moving to another room? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, I mean, what Nixon did was 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 terrible. You know, yeah. gave people false hope, a lot of things. Um, I understand. And, they, and people had their kids dying over there, okay? So it was definitely false hope in that case. Right. And in this case, I mean, with the Ukraine, hey, listen, you got an idea on how you're going to solve it? Then why don't you let us know what it is now? Well, there and, is a possibility. And, there is a possibility. And maybe he, even he has... even write or talk to our president and say, hey, I'd like well, to help you with this. I think I may, well, maybe I can talk I to Putin. Why should he help the guy he's going to run against? Because but, you want to help the United States, Phil, well, because you want to help does. the human race. And not because you're a no, selfish nobody, son of a bitch, which is exactly what Trump is. Biden, because if it, doesn't set, if it doesn't help Trump, it doesn't yeah. get done. Well, let, let me ask you this. You think Biden wants Trump to have a victory before the election? Then if, why doesn't he do it? Then why, well, why doesn't let me Trump ask you something. Trump, why doesn't Trump come over there with all this media, go over there and talk to Putin and stop the war tomorrow? Why doesn't he do that? That's, and he'll get that's what he says he could do if he was president, but he can't he do can it. He can do it, it. Phil. Phil, as a private citizen, he could exactly. still go over there and as a former president and talk to to uh, to Don't Putin. Believe it. Other presidents have done. Uh, former presidents have done it. O sure. Only with the sanction of the the government. No, man. no, you can do right. it without the sanction. Can do what he wants, Phil. Biden is uh, not to give that to Trump. Trump can't do anything. Trump, all Trump is to Putin is this sucker. 
Well, yep. you, you should ask Josh uh, tomorrow. Bring if, his uh, bring his soccer ball. Citizens back. can uh, go over and negotiate <laughs> for the government, but no, no, I'm not game. saying negotiate. I'm saying mediate. Well, you know, uh, I know that Jimmy Carter had overseen elections in other countries to make sure that they were legitimate. Yeah, but uh, he. I don't think this is the same yes, thing. Yes, former presidents can if they want to. A lot of them don't. A lot of them want to just be they had enough of world politics and they don't want to deal with it anymore. Well, I, hey, I hey. think that Trump could be the one that could stop this war. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> because he could get an audience with both Zelensky and... Zelensky uh, wouldn't even talk to Trump. Trump I is... is a, true. Why Trump? Trump made him look like crap. Tried to make him look like crap. All over and Zelensky all over said him. that Trump didn't ask him anything that was wrong. He, on but that he moment. pissed all over Zelensky. Uh, I don't think so. Yes, he did. Don't you remember, Phil? I remember. Where's your memory? Where's your I memory? Saying, Where's your I memory? Zelensky you know, it's like Trump it, 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 it's wrong. like Trump is your little bastard child. You know, who 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 basically you forgive all the things he does. Oh, he's killed a, a chicken in the neighbor's yard. Oh well, it's not my son. My son wouldn't do that. Of yeah. course not. You know, you have you well, just Alan would. Nobody. Phil, what, point, huh? Phil, Trump, what? Once Trump uh, is out of favor during this election, he'll back Chris Christie. Phil will. I don't think so. Well, I, I hope Chris Christie lights a fire under his ass. Oh, he will. He plans to. Yeah. And you know, what the, chicken. you know what you know what they're all sitting around waiting for, is they're all kind of like uh, uh, hedging their bets, and ju they're just kind of waiting, and they're waiting to see what happens with Trump and all these cases against him, which are all going to come down at the same time. You know that. Oh yeah. One right after the other, and he's right going to be so primary. far up his, to his ass in litigation that he won't even be able to run a race, and then they've got some real ammunition against him. The biggest piece they of still. ammunition they have against Biden is that he tripped today. Again. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean really tripped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A round dot. Well, Biden isn't that. spending all this money in the gym to work out and twists his ankle and, and messes up his shoulder and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, mm. I got hurt. Yeah. Well, yeah. And here's what I want mm. to say. Like, Phil, like, put some faith in yourself and your own. Your, your own brain power and your own Well, if we do that, we're all in trouble. Well, hold on and ask yourself, okay, just put yourself in those shoes. What exactly do you think you could do with the power of the presidency to say broker that peace deal? That that would that would work. Like you can't just like give away a half of Ukraine and expect, you know, Zelensky to roll over. Like really broker that deal. And, you know, and it, it's not too far of a stretch to think that this is all Trump just spouting bullshit. Like, you know, like, no, of course Trump, he doesn't, have, look, he doesn't Brian, have a plan. Trump was the first guy to get five uh, Arab countries to sign peace accords with Israel. I think Trump has got the ability to do it. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think Trump has been weakened by the media and uh, by all of these cases. I, I like How's he weakened by the media when you have half the media on his side no the media is not on Who, his side. whose side is fox on they're not on his anymore oh, oh well maybe he blew maybe because he blew his relationship with them but he does have fox i mean emotionally uh, wait a minute let me finish he's got fox he's got newsmax okay he's got o, Roger o, he's got oan okay he's also got uh cnn in that cnn is now trying to be neutral so the well, only me, the only the only organization that is really uh, on his on Biden's side and is like touting Biden is MSNBC. Well, I, I tell so you. So tell right me now, how nobody is backing Trump. Right now, Gabnet has more listeners than OAN and Fox. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, and Fox? No, Fox yeah. still has a lot of listeners. Yeah, but they've they've lost a lot. Nah, no, no, not uh, as many Carlson. as you think. Not as many. No, Tucker Carlson hasn't hasn't caused some very many uh, listeners because the listeners were going to listen to that channel no matter who was. You could put a dog on there doing the show, and they would be watching it because they're Fox people, and that's it. You know, right now I th I think that they're they're going elsewhere. 
I, I really think that. Where do you think they're going? To? Where are they going? Uh, I, they may be going to Newsmax. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're really pushing that. <clears throat> uh, Although Newsmax doesn't have as many clearances as they once had. What, what's clearances? <clears throat> clearances are clearances of places that, that carry them. Uh, oh, they're no yeah. longer carried on, on, I believe, on Viacom here in New York. Neither is, uh, neither is uh, what do you call it, the other one that we had, OAN. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, and uh, I know that we don't get Newsmax on uh, our Hulu uh, subscription thing, you know, where I get all these channels. Uh, but, you know, I mean, basically, uh, there's Fox. And Fox owns the, owns the, owns the, the, owns the house. You know, they, they still got the biggest ratings. Yeah. Right now. And they're nationwide, unlike some of these other ones. Yeah. Who do you watch? Uh, what are you saying, Jeff? How, did, how uh, does uh, Fred watch? What? Phil? How, how do you, how do you uh, look every day now? I, I get up. And I watch a, a pretty benign show on Fox called Fox and Friends. Uh, and it's, you know, it's one of these ones where they're on the couch and they're, they're discussing a few things. And uh, it, it's almost like an infotainment uh, uh, show. And so I'll watch that for about 15 minutes. And then I will usually just watch some educational stuff on YouTube. And then I go to work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all day at work, I'm not watching it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, but you know, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that uh, um, uh, uh, I, you know, I think I think Trump's has got a hard uh, a hard time ahead of him, and quite oh, frankly, yeah. I don't think in the end he's going to get the nomination because I think by the time it's time for the public to start considering uh, who they want to see as their nominee in their particular party, I think that Trump is going to be so much up to his ass in trouble. That it's just not gonna not he's not gonna be able to hold his. And I say audience. this, in 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 previous elections, the people that were front runners usually were not the front runners when it came time uh, uh, for either the um, the convention or uh, so you know even in the last uh, uh, the two Repub in the 2016 uh, election for the Republicans. Uh, you know, Trump had had a had a sizable lead. He was always in the middle, but prior to that, uh, you know, you always had this guy came up, whether it was Herman Cain or it was this one or that. It was one, the flavor of the month. Marco Rubio, yeah, yeah, yeah the flavor of the month, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right now, Trump is really the only uh, known entity out there, and he's good at rallying his base, but he needs more than the base to win. Yeah, but and, I mean, you've got you've got you got Trump light. You got uh, what's his name, DeSantis, who's kind of Trump I light. He's Trump light. I I like. But he's, I, he's, DeSantis he's, make. Huh? Oh, excuse me, DeSantis makes Trump look liberal. He's so conservative. <laughs> what, the, oh. No, I nah, nah, I don't agree with no? you on that. I think that okay. that DeSantis um, suffers from the same thing Trump did, is that he doesn't have any politics either. It's the politics of DeSantis getting elected. I don't know. Yeah. Now, and governor for two, a term and a half or something. Where, where do you guys sit on Robert Kennedy? Now, he's a Democrat, and he's declared against uh, Biden. Uh, but uh, he's a pretty interesting guy. No, he's not. He's a fucking lunatic. Oh. Yeah. He's a lunatic. Look, I didn't even have to say it. Brian was doing the lunatic sign. Yeah, Kevin, too, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's because uh, you know anybody other than you know the the old guard, I guess. But uh, you know he he's got some interesting points, and uh, I think he's more like a I have interesting points, but I'm not running for president. Yeah, but, you know uh, most of them are sticking. What we need, here. you know, what I think the Republicans need. I think they need a reasonable candidate. I right. think they need one person who isn't acting up like DeSantis or like Trump or whatever. And it's just a slow, steady, uh, uh, you know, shit. Oh, you mean a, a, some, somebody that will take the company line and go with no, it? No, no, no. I'm not saying that at all. Well, I'm saying take a more. How about, how about Mike Pence? Take well, a less, like in, let me put it this way, a less incendiary uh, yeah. position. 
Uh, not that they're going to give up on anything or they're going to not be a good conservative or whatever. In fact, Trump isn't a conservative. If you think he's a conservative, you're nuts. You know, no, and no. neither is DeSantis. They well, are self-serving are jerks. Okay. Now I'll tell you. You talk about uh, Chris Christie. Okay. Let's talk about him for a second. I'd vote for him before I'd vote for either of those two guys. Yeah, me too. You know. Yeah. I mean, about, he, uh, he, he's the one that dropped out was Rat, Radcliffe. Radcliffe. Yeah, and by the way, I had it wrong the other day. I said he pulled out a sandwich out of his pocket on the Letterman show. It was a donut. Okay. <laughs> so, and then he had a cup of coffee. He dipped it in. Yeah. But Radcliffe. Radcliffe was. I think that's his name. I can't remember how they pronounce it. But he. I always liked him as a conservative. He, he was conservative, but he was, he was uh, a reasonable conservative. Well, you know, the Republicans have had veteran. Great, have great have had great conservatives in the past. I think, uh, you know. Um, um, oh, you mean like McCain and uh, and Romney? No, like George H. W. Bush. I'm talking about people like um, um, uh, what's his name? Gold. Um, um, gold. Gold. Uh, yeah, he ran against Goldwater. John. Goldwater. 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 Yeah. Uh, I think that he was a a, a good cons a real good conservative. You know. Uh, and a, a, tr a truly honest person as well, you know. And yet, I would never have voted for him because I'm not that kind of conservative. But truly he was a conservative. These guys aren't conservatives. The Republicans have really lost what it's like to be a conservative. Uh, you know. You know, I I I gotta say that you said truly honest. I don't think either party is truly honest. No, I well, I mean, look today, it's just uh, who can make the most noise, you know. And I have, the, I have a theory. I have a yeah. theory that the first party that has the balls to shed the crazies, like you know, mm -hmm. alienate the crazy hard, hard wing of the, their own party, uh, will gain power for the next ten years. It, 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 but it's like ripping off a band aid. It's like you, you got to do it. But we have this. Pri we have a primary system, man. I, it's tough, man. You got to yeah, win. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we got. The primary system is one of the problems. The reason it's a problem is there is nothing in the Constitution that calls for a primary. Okay, there is nothing constitutional about a primary. This is a recent affectation of politics. What they do before primaries? They would just you would go to. They went to conventions, and they all yelled at each other and negotiated with each <laughs> other. And one guy came out as the nominee of the party. And then they went against the other party's nominee who did exactly the same thing. There were no primaries, you know, and we don't and need the person them. with the most wins should win. Well, the, here's wait, the, but, that, but, but that's sort of like a primary, though, isn't it? No, but here's what I'm saying with the primaries. A primary, for instance, New York State cost us multi millions of dollars every four years. Yeah. And what are we doing? We're doing the business of the parties. We're not doing the business of the people. And in electing somebody, the primary should money. be done away with. It, it's but, it's expensive, and it really all. If the parties want to hold a primary, then let them pay for it. It's a money making operation. Even uh, like radio stations have uh, what do they call that? The uh, political uh, charge or the uh, there, there, there's uh, political there's, rates. Yeah, the political rate. Yeah, you know they, they make a fortune. Uh, TV. Wait, wait, radio. wait! No, they don't make a fortune. Print. No, they don't make a well, fortune. Well, it's it's at a, it's Phil, at the lowest. You're not rate. broadcasting. You don't know what you're talking about. No, it's at the lowest. I you advertise. Know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, so I'm it, a, they have to I do pay. it. They have to charge at the lowest rate they right. charged any advertiser for that particular time period. In, yes, over, I, over know, the I, year. I'm a merchant and I advertise and I pay for advertising and I'm familiar with the political rate because I usually ask for it. Uh, and, you know, I don't deserve it, but I asked for it, and you know, it's a place to it's a place to negotiate from. Oh, I want the. How, how, how do you prevent a primary, though? It, it only seems the natural order. Of no, but it isn't the natural order of things. It's only a recent affectation of politics, and there is again, I say, nothing in the United States Constitution. It talks about elections every four years. It talks about House of Representatives every two, and the Senate every six, and blah 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 blah. But it does not call for primaries. Yeah, but what you described, I, first of all, I brought up the primary. I, I, I see the primary as an issue. But 
what you had explained that existed before the primaries, mm -hmm. the convention, right? Yeah. That's a form of primary. It, you know, like no, it's, it's not. It's, no, it's not a form of primary because we still have conventions. Only and it was now, done in the back room with it, cigars. Yeah, cigars and people negotiating and, and then putting up a nominee and so on and so forth. I don't think there was a primary that nominated uh, FDR. You know. Yeah, they, but it's a hashing out of who. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm zooming out maybe 10,000 feet here. I'm saying a primary is is the hashing out of who's going to be the the nominee going forward for the general. So whether it happens at the convention or it happens through vigorous debate up into the convention, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that the primaries are costing the states a billion dollars right. a year every time they hold when, every time when they, they every when, time they hold these 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 primaries. They're Alex, an expensive process, and it's the taxpayers of the state that are paying for it. When, when really it should be the parties because they're the only ones who benefit from it. Now, when they when they would take votes and they would go to Washington, uh, my ex-wife's grandfather took the uh, the votes for Hoover, uh, and uh, uh, you know they that's so the electoral he delegate. College. He was a he was a delegate. Oh, okay. And uh, so if they had delegates, isn't that the same? No, so no, no. Here here's what happens, Phil, and it it, it shouldn't happen. Uh, we shouldn't have to put up. Uh, with um, the uh, these primaries because all they do is find out who the nominee of the party is going to be from that state. But it's only on the first ballot at the convention. So after the first ballot in any of those conventions, all bets are off. So the primary system flies out the window after the first ballot. Why were they saying they didn't want people to change or they couldn't change their uh, primary vote? No, uh, you're thinking about the Electoral College. Oh. You're thinking about the Electoral College. Yeah, but it, does it really fly out the window if it holds water? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it flies out the window. After the first, after the first, uh, uh, what do you call it? After the first uh, uh, vote in the convention, they're no longer obligated to vote for those people from their state. It's it, it, If it goes to a second ballot, the whole thing could be turned on its ear, and and the guy who never, won the primaries might not wind get it, wind up getting the nomination. Is that ever? My happened? God, what? What's oh, the it's solution? happened. It's happened a lot. Yeah. What? What would be the solution, though? I mean, academic. Solution speaking. is no primaries. Just screw you. Have your convention. Figure out who the nominee is going to be. We'll figure out who the nominee on our side is going to be, and may the best man win. Or a woman. So you're for the two party system. You don't want to. No, a I'm for I'm for a hundred party system if that's what it takes to make politics honest. I'm not talking about a two party system here. But anyway, I got I got a theme song running here. Oh boy, that's a good one tonight, hey? Yeah. Jeff, yeah. always thank you. It kind of looks like the Hollywood Squares. Thank you for being the top square again, Jeff. Uh, thank you. Alan, gets the thank square. Thank you. By the way, we can't even see Brian anymore with an eye. Brian, are you still there? I'm waiting. Yep, he's still there. Yeah, I, I, fall asleep. I better, I better not have you turn on your uh, your dome light because then you might use up all your electricity for the for the car. Anyway, thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate it. Uh, 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 Phil, thank you for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, same thing goes to our good friend Kevin and Brian with a Y. Thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, we really enjoy it. Alan oh, and Alan, thank you. Didn't, I didn't thank you, Alan. I'm sorry. No, I gotta, I, that's okay. No, that's all right. I, now liver. I thank you. Now shut up and go away. Yeah, anyway, you go. Uh, thank you so much for being with me tonight. I appreciate it. Bye-bye, everybody. Wave goodbye. Yeah, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Jack Bishop will not be on next because he's had to go to the hospital. And uh, he'll, uh, ho I hopefully he'll be back tomorrow night. But in the meantime, we'll just go on with our regular round of programming when we leave here. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.